Oh, oh my gosh. That is so groovy. Mm. Oh my gosh. So last week I showed you that I scored all of these molds in an abandoned shed. I thought let's play a game of smash or cast and I'll pick a couple out. So smash or cast is where I either pick to cast it again or smash the clay piece and find a new home for the mold. So let's pick a couple. I'm really struggling to make a choice on which ones I want to do. So I think I might just grab a whole stack. I'm going to grab this stack right here. Our very first smash or pass piece for the year. Mm. Oh no. This mold is very sad. It is very sad because it's very old and it's very marked up. There's lots of scratch marks on it, lots of dints. There's a lot going on on it and it's really hard to rescue the detail that's in it. It looks to me like a bowl or like a candy dish. Kind of reminds me of a candy dish like I've seen in Coraline or something. I don't actually know how to get this one out. It's really like stuck in there <laughs> to be honest she's really it's really damaged and it's lost a lot of its detail i would either say from being poured a lot or not being looked after well enough i mean it was sitting in an abandoned shed for a lot of time i think it's gonna have to be a smash i feel like there's gonna be bowls in there that are worth my time like this is a lot of extra work to get to a standard where it's workable and to get it to that standard where it's workable compared to just pouring one that's ready to go it kind of defeats the purpose of having a slip cast mold when it is so damaged it's um it's a bit of a shame i mean the outside is a bit of a telltale sign just because it is so carved up that this was also going to be carved up on the inside but uh, what a bummer i mean you can still make it work you could still make it work if you were willing to spend the time on it but because i've got so many molds and there's potential that there's so many bowls out there I think that this one is a smash. It's just not for me. I can appreciate it, but it's a smash. Oh, it is leaking. I had expected that one to leak because the halves don't match up properly. I'm just going to let it set for a bit, but I think this one might already be a move on one. All right, this one was a little bit precarious because the sides don't match up perfectly, but it was separating and leaking. So hopefully we've got an okay cast. It might be a little bit hard to pull apart because it was leaking. I can't see it. Oh, as much as I can appreciate the time and effort that went into designing this piece and the detail that's in this piece, I really do not like it. It just feels like it's going to feel so awkward to hold. It doesn't feel, it looks, it looks uncomfortable to hold this and it looks very jagged and sharp when it's meant to feel dainty and delicate. It's got that fine china kind of look. But I'm not digging, like I don't like the way the handle is shaped. I don't like the way the spout is shaped, how it's all jaggedy. I also don't like how it kind of like columns in and then blows out. And that's just a taste preference. I've gotten it out of the mold and the handle didn't quite fill up. But that's probably because of my pouring speed. As you can see there, it's like got a hole in the handle. I really don't like the shape of this. It feels off. And the fact that the mold doesn't actually line up, the bottom doesn't sit flat because the mold doesn't fit each half. I'm thinking that maybe the person that had these before me has had this mold and has broken a half and then found another half and joined the two together. Because what happens is when you do a mold, you've always got to match the other half up with the other half so that they match perfectly. I'm thinking that the 
fact that you have to do so much just to get it to a point where you can work with it, it's a smash for me. <laughs> the handle, it will not leave me. <laughs> it lives on another day. <laughs> All right, let's do the little one. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is so groovy. Oh my gosh. This just proves that trends are recycled over and over again because I have literally been seeing these everywhere. They're candle holders, but they're like kind of like bubbly. I see people wheel throwing this shape. I see people resin pouring this shape. It has been such a popular shape at the moment and they look like they're holders, like candle holders. They are very cool. Oh my God. Gosh, isn't that cool? When was this mold made? 1989. So this is a, like almost 90s design and we're recycling it now in 2020s. I love that they're a cute little set and I love that I could attach things to those. Aren't they bubbly and delicious? I think I maybe wouldn't have liked them so much if the trend wasn't around and I saw how people were using these and the colors that they were using on them. Like, I don't know whether I'm really influenced by the trend to say that I like these a lot because if this trend wasn't happening, would I have been like, oh, these are weird? I don't know. But right now, because I've seen the inspiration behind them and I can appreciate what other people have done with this shape, I really like these. I like that I could do some really cool ombre, even like airbrushing with the airbrushing gun to get a really cool ombre effect on these. But I could also add attachments. You could do like little rainbow stripes. I don't know, there's so much that you could do. I also love the idea of potentially collaborating with a candle maker, a candlestick, and in a cool groovy shape or color that matches the bottoms. I like that they're kind of simple because I could also sculpt the bottom and attach it to a little dish or plate. Yeah, they're a winner. I like them a lot. The other thing is I can use this as a prototype to figure out how big to do other candlestick holders. In fact, maybe I should get an animal shape that I love and turn that into a candlestick holder. Like this is inspiring because I haven't really done many candlestick holders. This is definitely a cast. I will cast this one again. Here we go, the last one. Oh my gosh, it's a frog. <laughs> I love it. Actually, I need to wait. I need to wait. I haven't even seen the frog yet. I've just seen its booty. <laughs> oh my gosh. But I love frogs and anything from the slip casting molds that are frogs end up looking really cool. I haven't not liked a frog from the slip casting molds yet. So I think, yeah, we've got some little froggy legs that we've got to attach. Carve them up a little bit. Just trying to get this fella out. It kind of looks actually a bit more like a toad than a frog just because of the scaly back. It's more like lumpy and warty than it is slimy. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, what a sweet little face you have. Stop it, you. Okay, so the legs go on there. <laughs> or do they go? No, they have to go on there. That's where the flat surface is. They look a bit strange. The front legs look a bit odd. I need to figure out how exactly they position properly. It kind of looks better without, no. Does it look better without the legs or with the legs? I'm actually not sure whether I like it with or without the legs. It does look like it's missing something with the legs, but the legs are very like profoundly in front. I love this. It's more of a figurine type thing. But I'm wondering whether there's a way I could make a double use for this because I like to turn them into something more functional. Although this is really sweet and really cool. I'm just wondering if we can give it another purpose other than a figurine. I am thinking I might take inspiration from the candle holders and see if I can cut a really nice hole in it and turn it into a planter or a candle holder. I would need to patch this up if I was going to do a planter and maybe put some drainage holes in there in replacement. But that is really cool. I really like it. This is definitely a cast again.
Oh. <laughs> I almost think that no one would have guessed this. Oh my goodness. Oh, beautiful. I love it. <laughs> what is that? <laughs>